The Halifax gibbet, which was installed in Halifax, England, on Gibbet Street, was a device to decapitate criminals in place of using an axe or a sword. A rope was attached to the wooden block holding the axe up and pinned to the structure. To release the axe, the pin would be pulled out. It was first introduced in the 16th century for criminals who stole items which were valued at more than 13 and a half pence. The suspected thieves were held in the custody by the bailiff. Sixteen men were summoned as jurors. Only two questions were asked. Firstly, were the goods found in the suspect's possession? And secondly, were the goods valued at more than 13 and a half pence? There was no judge present or counsel for the defendant. It is said that the area attracted criminals as local weavers produced hard-wearing woolen fabric used mostly for military uniforms, and whilst the cloth was left outside to dry, it would often be stolen. It is not determined how many executions there were from the first execution in 1286, and some records are missing, but we do know in total there were 56 men and women decapitated between 1538 and 1650, the final victims being Abraham Wilkinson and Anthony Mitchell. There was only one way to escape the gibbet, and that is if he or she withdrew their head before the blade reached them and run as fast as they could to the parish boundary, which was only a quarter of a mile away. Once the criminal had crossed that border, there was no legal means for the criminal to be brought back. Only two criminals are known to have managed to escape, a man named Dennis and one named John Lacey. Seven years later, foolishly, John Lacey returned to Halifax, thinking he had been pardoned or forgotten about, only to be caught and executed. John Lacey has never been forgotten, as there is a public house near Gibbet Street named after him called The Running Man. People complained about how severe the punishment was for the younger generation. So Oliver Cromwell, an English statesman and politician, finally ended the Halifax gibbet in 1650. Meanwhile, many years later in the late 1700s in France, a Joseph Ignace Guillotin, known as Dr. Guillotine, who was against capital punishment, invented a device to decapitate criminals in a humane way. Once Dr. Guillotine found out that some of the victims were still alive after decapitation, he continued his efforts to abolish the death penalty. The Guillotin family asked the French government to change the name of the device, and when they declined, the Guillotin family had to change their own name. Dr. Guillotin went on to live until the age of 75, dying of natural causes. It is not known if he was already familiar with the Halifax gibbet, which has become known as the Guillotin over the years.